Hello and welcome back to Firestorm Games. You're joining us as we take a look at some of Games Workshop's latest releases. This time it's Warhammer Underworld's Night Vault. This is a continuation from the previous Warhammer Underworld series, where last time we had Shadespire, this time we have Night Vault. This contains two new factions inside, two new warbands, and we also get some new tiles and some new rules in there as well. So in this video we're going to be opening the box up, looking at the rules, looking at some of the additional items that we have in here, before finally building the miniatures and discussing what we think of them. So let's get started and take a look inside. First things first, we have the Night Vault Learn to Play rulebook. Inside here we get, first of all, all the contents of the game, the miniatures and all the tokens and dice that you get in here. Next up we have a very brief tutorial on how to play the game. Now this is designed for people who've never played Shade Spy before. It's a brief rundown of the various phases, how the actions work, how to um, decipher what different things on the cards mean, before actually going into the gameplay itself. Everything's nicely diagrammed. So you can see exactly how everything should be when you play the game before having a simple, straightforward um, starter game which involves two of the Stormcast miniatures and three of the Nighthawk miniatures at the bottom there as well. So next up we have the main rules. This rulebook contains more of the substantial rule set for playing Warhammer Underworlds. It also contains the background about the city of Shadespire, which the previous core set focused around. This again focuses on that. However, we have the Night Vault that has opened and released the new Nighthaunt miniatures that we find in this box set on to the Denzians of Shadespire. So this kind of introdu introduces the two factions that we get in here. We get Storm Sire's Curse Breakers, which are the Stormcast Eternal units, and the Thorns of the Briar Queen as well. Next we have some advertisement for some of the other warbands you can buy before moving on to the rules. Now this is a more fleshed out version of what we've already seen in the Learn to Play rules. Everything goes into a little bit more detail, explains some of the more specialist special rules that you can find on your miniatures and your cards as well. Now in here this is pretty much the same as the rules that we've already seen in the Shade Spire, but there are a few additional items such as um, rules for using spells and also uh, some rules that allow you to randomize and do scatter tokens as well. So this is pretty much the same kind of thing. We have some alternate rules at the end which allow you to have uh, two, three and four player games. You can have uh, campaigns, match play, basically anything that you want to use to kind of expand your gameplay further. At the back here we have a very handy glossary of terms, so if you see a keyword printed elsewhere in a card or in the rulebook, you can just quick take a quick glance at this page here, it tells you what page the rules are elaborated on or mentioned on, and you can have a quick look to remind yourself what they do in here. And at the back we have a very handy rules reference which goes through the rounds and the turn structure, things like that. So after the rules we're going to be looking at some of the tokens and the boards that we get inside here. And here we have the two boards that we get inside this game. Now again, these follow this hexagonal pattern with the board printed on underneath. You can see we have these uh, brighter circles here for representing different objects like terrain, impassable objects. There's some red about borders that you can see just here. These are both double-sided and fold out to make the gaming area. Keeps everything nice and contained and the card stock's quite nice and thick as well. So we also have the second board here. Again, follows the same kind of structure as before. Double-sided, which means you can expand on your games and even combine them with your previous game boards from the original Shadespire core set. Next up we have the tokens. Now this is the same kind of tokens as we've seen before. We have things like the wound tokens, guard tokens, we have uh, move and charge tokens, uh, glory tokens and they're double sided so you can see we've got the uh, spent versions there and the unspent on this side. We have some various little traps here, these are new and also this is the basically how scattering works. You place this down, roll the dice and depending on which face it shows it'll scatter in that direction. We also have these objective markers here, which you can see have a design on one side as well as a number, and then on the opposite side they are just blocked off with this kind of rubber pile to kind of randomize how the objectives appear in the game. Again, these are quite nice thick cardstock, you can see here it just pops out very easily, very nicely printed on one side as well, and we have nice detailing. So with the tokens looked at, let's move on to the dice. If you've played Shadespire, you will already recognize the white attack dice and the black defense dice, of which we have three defense dice and five attack dice. However, we also get these rather nicely colored blue dice, which are used for your magical attacks. Now, magic's going to be playing a big part 
going forward in Warhammer Underworlds. In fact, I believe that the two new warbands that have been announced both feature miniatures which can cast spells. So if you want to use magic in this game, you're going to have to pick up this core set in order to get access to the rules and also these dice as well. So with the dice looked at, let's move on to the cards. Inside the box, you will find three sets of cards. First of all, we have the Thorns of the Briar Queen deck, which are used by the Thorns of the Briar Queen warband. These are broken down into the fighter cards, and you can see here these have their regular fighter side and also the inspired side on the back there as well. Before we move on to the objective cards and then also the power cards as well, you can see they're detailed and different colors on the back. We also have the same for the Storm Size Curse Breakers, same kind of deal. We have the fighters at the beginning. We have this nice handy little uh, image in the top left corner there so you know exactly which miniature the card refers to. Before moving on to the extra cards deck, which we have here, and this is basically just the additional cards that you can use to expand these decks later on. Once you have a better idea of how the game plays, you can add these ad additional objective cards in, all these additional power cards, as well. This basically gives some expansion for later games. You can also use these with addition, with other warbands that you may have already collected, so long as obviously it's kind of worthwhile because some of these are Stormcast, Stormsire Eternal, but there are some generic ones in here as well. So what's nice about this is we actually get a couple of decks that we can start playing with straight away. You don't need to worry about building anything. You can literally open this box up and start playing the game straight away using these pre-built decks. So the only thing that we haven't looked at yet are the miniatures. So let's take a look at those. Inside Night Vault, you will find two warbands worth of miniatures. Each of these are rendered in a colored plastic. The Storm Sires Curse Breakers are rendered in blue, and the Thorns of the Briar Queen are in green. Now, all these miniatures are push fit, which means you can get started playing with them very quickly indeed. And once you're on the table, the colored plastic means that you know exactly which faction belongs to who. First of all, we'll be looking at the Thorns of the Briar Queen. Now, these are very much Nighthorned miniatures in their inspiration. We have the regular Chain Rest, which, which we have four in here, but we also have three special characters. We have Varclav the Cruel, which is very similar to a Chain Gas. We also have the Ever Hanged, which is quite similar to a Lord Executioner. And finally, we have the Briar Queen, who is a leader of this warband, and she bears some resemblance to Lady Alinda. Now, even though we have quite a few miniatures in this warband, they are all very individual in their appearance. They each feature different poses, different weapons. They're very characterful, especially the chain rasps, which are normally fairly similar across the range, but these guys are all very unique in their appearance. Even though the miniatures are push fit, there really isn't any scrimping on detail here. The robes are nice and flowing, and also the detail in Lady Olinda's um, thorns, which are appearing from her hand, and the roses as well, are very high detailed as well. The second warband that we have in here are the Storm Sires Curse Breakers. Now these guys are Stormcast Eternal miniatures, and they're all evocators as well. Now this kind of uh, brings back a a nice callback to the Age of Sigmar star set, the new one, which was recently released earlier this year, which also features the Sacrosanct Chamber miniatures as well as Nighthaunt. Now the miniatures in this warband aren't quite as unique in their appearance as those in the Thorns of the Briar Queen. And this is mainly because the Stormcast Eternals being a lot more uniform in their appearance anyway, wielding the same armor. However, the main character of the warband, which is Averon Stormstrike is a lot more uh, unique in his appearance. He's wearing a bare helmet, um, and he also has a slightly different staff than the rest of his warband. Now, whilst these miniatures aren't unique in their appearance, their sculpts and poses are very individualistic. They have these very dynamic poses, which actually work really well considering they are snap fit miniatures also. Once again, we also have some very detailed bases in which to mount your miniatures too. This gives them a little bit more thematic quality uh, as the bases are based around the, the faction as well as being based around Shadespire itself. As I've already mentioned, these miniatures are snap fit, which means you can assemble them in pretty much no time at all. You don't even need glue in order to get them to stick together, which is great because if you don't have the modeling equipment that you need for assembling miniatures, you can still start playing with them very quickly. However, due to the nature of snap fit miniatures, you may find that some will have some um, gaps and mold lines that will need to be removed before you paint them up. So with all of the miniatures in the set locked at, let's move on and get an overall summary for this box. 
So that concludes this unboxing of Warhammer Underworld's Night Vault. Overall, it's a really nice core set to pick up. It's great if you're a new player, you've never played the game, because it features everything you need to get started in playing Shadespire and also Night Vault. It's also great that if you're an existing player, you can pick this up. You have some extra warbands, you have some new gaming tiles, and also you get access to the magic using warbands, which will be released in the future. Which brings us to the price. Now, the RRP is £40, which isn't bad considering it's an entirely self-contained game. You get everything that you need to play inside the box. You don't need any additional tools to build the miniatures. You don't need any additional dice, range finders, rulers, anything like that. Everything you have is included inside this box set. However, the RRP for the set is £40, but it's currently available on the Firestorm Games for 10% less than that. And I'll include a link in the description below, which will take you directly to their page page on the Firestorm Games web store. So if you enjoyed this video, please do let us know in the comments below. Also make sure you subscribe to be kept up to date with all of our latest unboxing videos, and we hope to see you again on Firestorm Games.